Hi and welcome to this video where I've reconnected the gear linkage cables, popped the starter motor back in, put the heat shield on and the air filters back in, the battery and the battery tray and also the ECU. So in my next video it should be a case of putting the subframe back onto the car or possibly looking at the those rear bushes and I might change those just before I put the subframe back on as a bit of a precaution because they do tend to fail the MOTs. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video and as always many thanks for watching. So we start by refitting the clutch slave cylinder and also clipping the pipe back in. So I'll start with the pipe that's a little bit awkward to actually get to because it's tucked away down here at the back so you might actually find it's easier to access from the bottom of the car. Now just make sure you line that up properly because as you can see I've just missed it there so I just had to try and straighten it up a bit so that's now in nice and snugly. So coming around to the side of the gearbox we can just pop these nuts off now you'll also you can just see the grease there that's on the release fork so I have actually pre-greased this but I'm still just going to put a bit on here just for the sake of demonstrating that that end does want to have some grease on it so we can now push the slave cylinder in so it will sort of push its way back out again so there's a bit of pressure there Obviously it's connected to the clutch pedal um, and it's hydraulically operated so we've got a bit of fluid there that we're pushing against. So that's a couple of nuts on there and a 13mm socket. Pop those on and then what we do is torque those two to 24 newton meters, like so. There's our click. The other one's a little bit more awkward to get to. Less room there. Could use an extension. And there we go. So that's the clutch slave cylinder back on. So we can now refit the gear change cables. Now in hindsight, it would have probably been a good idea for me to have actually cleaned the sort of outer body of these cables because they were a bit difficult to get in. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease in there for the ball joints, like so. But as you can see, the actual cables are somewhat rusty, and also the brackets that those cables slot into are rusty. So I should have actually cleaned it. I've tried to cut corners here by just spraying it with a bit of grease in the hope I could get away with that. It didn't really work out as well as it could have done because when I came to push these in, as you can see, they, they didn't want to go in. So really I should have given them a good clean. So I'm tapping them lightly with a hammer. Emphasise the word lightly. And then eventually that's in. Adding a little bit of three and one there just to try and help, because I, I sort of need to rotate it now. It's in, but not quite. So it is going up and down a bit. We've got some movement now. So we just need to try and push it in fully and get those little spring clips to clip into the little cutouts on the side. So anyway, we'll pop the ball joint on there. Get that one on. And while I'm at it, I'll try and get this one in. This one went in a little bit easier he says. There it is. So that one actually sprung in quite nicely. There's the little clip so make sure they're in otherwise they could pop off while you're driving and then you lose your gear change. Right so that's that part done. I'm just going to check that all seems to be working okay now and we'll have a look. So everything does seem to be moving backwards and forwards okay and they're not popping out. So I think that job's done. 
So we can now go on to fitting the reverse switch and removing the lifting bracket and reconnect the rigid servo hose. So let's get this cable put back onto the gearbox. Now there is a little metal clip there, like so, just to hold that away, stop it getting jammed in with those gear change cables I expect. So we'll pop that on there with the spring clip and that's that job done. Now I did mean to remove this bracket last time when I did the engine beam, um, but completely forgot. So that's a 13mm socket, just to remove that. And obviously we've got to put the bracket back in place for the oxygen sensor, which is this piece. And that also has a clip on it for the pipe to the coolant reservoir bottle. So that just sort of clips apart. And then we can just clip that back over the pipe, put our bolt back in, like so. So that's going to the oxygen sensor um, before the catalytic converter, this one. So just pop that in there, like so. Give it a final tightening. Like that. And then we just need to connect that rigid pipe that goes for the servo. So it clips in there, two clips at the front. And then that just pushes in like so. So that's that job done. Now there is another little clip there for the oxygen cable just on the pipes. So you may want to clip that in as well just to keep that tidy. Okay so we can now refit and reconnect the starter motor, reconnect the oil pressure switch and replace the heat shield. So what we do need to do is bring those cables back down now that we had got out of the way and these tuck underneath the um, two pipes that go to the heater matrix inside the car. Um, ironically it probably would have been a bit easier to have pulled these cables down before putting the gear change cables on. But we fitted those so we will have to just struggle a little bit there. So I've got my starter motor now and a 15 millimeter socket and the two bolts. So let's offer this up to the back of the engine. Just make sure everything goes in. So there is a little metal bracket there which ironically that was fitted underneath as you can see there's a mark there that was actually fitted underneath the between the starter motor and the housing which I am somewhat surprised at because I would have thought that would have gone by the head of the bolt. Um, so I'm going to put the bolts in and put that bracket on you know at the end of the bolt. So that's why I've put the first bolt in now and there's our oxygen sensor wire again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bolt in there with the brackets. So you might find it easier for this top one if you use like an adjustable or flexible head adapter which is what I switched to in the end. And then we just need to torque those two to 85 newton meters, which is extremely awkward with an engine that's swinging away. So I was having to use my feet there, my knees, to try and steady the engine to try and get that 85 newton meters. There it goes, we've got the click, and obviously the upper one is going to be even more challenging. It'll be a lot easier with the subframe. So I seem to be getting used to having an engine just swinging away at the top now. So this is 10 millimeter um, socket for this one. And this is the sort of trigger cable that goes to the ignition. So I'm giving that a light clean with a brass brush just to help with the contact. If you go too crazy with it, you may take off the tinning and then you're gonna to have to re-tin it because bare copper will oxidize rather quickly and we'll tighten that to 8 newton meters like so so 
we've now got the two main cables one going straight to the battery which is obviously giving the power to the starter motor and the other one is to the alternator which are connected together so that's the battery one and again I'm going to give that a bit of a clean and this is the alternator so it is worth cleaning those while you've got the opportunity and then this is a 13 millimeter socket to tighten this one up and those are tightened to 14 newton meters so it's not very tight can be useful to have one of these small torque wrenches I put the links in the description below the videos anyway if anyone needed to buy any of these tools and then we just pop on the connector now for the oil pressure like so and there's a little locking catch there so pop that in so those are the two wires that are now got to go to the power steering motor which is when we get the subframe back on so what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of silicon grease on the two rubbers because they slide onto the two dowels so it just make it a little bit easier to slide on and obviously if I need to remove this in the future um, I also think the silicon grease possibly extends the life of the rubber and stops it perishing so it does, certainly doesn't do any harm popping some of that on okay so let's bring this up now there is a little clip there for the oxygen sensor which is that I would have clipped it on afterwards but just to show in the video that you need to do that I'm going to clip it on first and then put it into place but like I say you would be a bit easier to clip that on afterwards so we just slide it left over those dowels make sure that cable's not pinched at all and then we've got the one nut at the top and I'm definitely putting copper grease on that because that could easily get seized in with the heat of the exhaust so that's a 10 millimeter socket now because I had the camera in the way I found it easier to use this little tool here just to start the thread off and feed it in and then I finish that off with 8 newton meters on the mini torque wrench like so okay then so now we can refit the air filter housing and I suggest you fit the throttle body pipe first so I do suggest you actually put the air pipe on between this and the throttle body first as you'll see why in a moment but anyway I'll carry on as I meant to so I gave that little bit of silicon on there just to help the air filter slide onto the inlet duct like so now you do need to remove that little bolt there I put that there for safekeeping but the battery is also held in with that so you do need to stop at this point because you try fitting that pipe on with the air filter in place it's very tricky well nigh on impossible so give the throttle body a bit of a clean there now I did notice that quite a bit of corrosion had formed around that throttle body on the aluminium so again I'm going to put a little bit of silicon grease on this it might possibly avoid the corrosion building up on that throttle body now this is quite a fiddly pipe to get back on because you've got the the pipe clip there and you need to get your tools in there to clip it on so that's the click R like that and in theory you just put it together and it should spring together so you might need to actually bend it down slightly because mine was a sort of it straightened itself a bit and this is where it's really awkward to try and get in there 
with the click R pliers and just pull that together and hope it's going to snap over. Come on. There we go. So got it in the end. Took a few attempts to do that. So now we can go back to the air filter and put it back in again. So this is the second time I've done this now. Okay, so that's the cables to the cooling motor. And then we've got a single bolt here on the right hand side. That's 10 millimeter socket. Just pop that in. Like so don't put the back bolt in yet because that's also holding the battery box in place. So just put the one in and then we can get these cables clipped back on to the air filter housing. So you've got a couple of conduits there. Like so. And then we do need to replace the cable tie that we had to cut to remove this. So this doesn't need to be very tight. Just enough to keep those cables in place. Right, so that's the air filter basically in. We've just got the last click R strap to put on. Now I sometimes find it easier if you use a screwdriver just to help push it down as you pinch it together. So finally we've got the breather pipe from the what would have been called the rocker cover which is probably now a cam cover and as you'll notice mine is a bit um, unusual it's got a bit of sort of homemade pipe work there because it's snapped on mine so I will need to order a new one of those but anyway right so that's that done so we can now move on to refitting the battery housing and the battery Okay, so again I've got to remove the two screws that I put there just for safekeeping. Now bearing in mind that these corrode in quite badly, it might be worth just putting a bit of copper copper slip in there. So hopefully it'll make it easier for them to come out next time. Obviously one of the bolts is completely broken. That's the one at the back and on the left. So this actually will only be held in now with those two bolts there and the one that holds the air filter as well. It's a bit of a tight fit there with the cables so make sure you get that plastic bit at the back to the front and not behind that panel. So that's in there. Like I say very tight um, so you might find one of these little access tools might help you just get the thread started so that's a 10 millimeter socket when you do come to tighten it up and the others are also 10 millimeters so like i said i can only put two two screws in there but that should actually be fine and these are technically tightened to eight newton meters which obviously is not very tight at all Right, so that's our compartment in. So we've also got the multi-connector that went to the fuse and relay box there. We need to pop that back in. Now, what I did is want to put the compartment for the battery in. I've just got it slightly off. I didn't notice that. So I need to just lift this splash guard off. That sort of protects the ABS pump, I expect, from water which is a good idea. Pop that back in like so. Okay, so back to the connector. And that just pushes down in the corner there like so. And then we can put the cover back on Make sure that's grommets in the right place. Stop any water getting in. And that's the little breather pipe for the battery. Okay, so we can put the main ECU back in now. And it's not that way, it's that way. 
So before you push it all in and clip it in, make sure you put your cables on first. Makes it just a bit easier. You've got a bit more space there before you actually drop it right down. There we go. So that's those two on there. Now it will clip down into place. And again, you've got like a water seal there, rubber seal. Definitely want to make sure that's on. You really don't want water getting into the ECU. So, back with the battery. That's been on charge, so it should be okay now. And what I'll do is I'll connect the positive, but not the negative. Because obviously I don't want to power things up yet. We're not ready for that. So there's our vent pipe back in. It's for any gas when the battery's charging. Because you obviously get hydrogen being given off. So there's our spring clamp. Again, that's 10 millimetre socket for that. And technically they're tightened to six Newton meters. Right, so there's our positive now. Pop that on. You definitely don't want to over tighten that because you could break that. So that's a 10 millimeter socket and that's to five Newton meters. And then there's a little cover there just to protect probably from short circuits once the bonnet's back down. Okay, so I think we're finished here now. So here's some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. So in this photo, we can see the starter motor, which is made by Bosch. And here's the solenoid and the motor in green. And then in this photo, we can actually see the main power to the solenoid and the ignition trigger parts. And in this one on the other side, we can see the pinion gear, and there again is the solenoids. Now looking at the back of the engine, we've got a couple of photos here showing the back where the starter motor is. And you can also see the oil filter there, and there's the um, drive axle coming from the gearbox. So you've been watching refitting ancillaries on a Mini R50. And thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you refit your gearbox and clutch on your car. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in November 2021. And I can be found on Instagram and Facebook under Coats and Gators.